folks, Adam back. I want to talk to you tonight about some more crypto stuff. So tonight's topic is tokenization. There's been a lot of talk about why companies are tokenizing or why they should tokenize. So you might have heard some of the news about uh, Kodak partnering with a crypto asset company to tokenize their business and a lot of other mainstream companies are looking to do the same. So you might ask yourself, why would a mom and pop store or a brick and mortar store or your local coffee shop, why should they get on this crypto bandwagon? Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, is more on the Bitcoin bandwagon than ever. But George Soros, uh, the infamous billionaire uh, financier has gotten into the cryptocurrency space. He has made quite a U-turn. I think that the headline speaks for itself in regards to his stance on cryptocurrencies. So I want to go here and take a look at this Bloomberg article where it's it's announced that he is prepared to trade cryptocurrencies. Here's another article that I guess came out today. It's dated April 7th. Rockefeller's $3 billion venture capital firm begins to invest in cryptocurrency. There are a couple of reasons. First and foremost is the hype, right? So it is the new buzzword, blockchain. So anyone putting blockchain in their business anywhere, they'll get more business. Uh, it's been shown that even Kodak or any other company that announces they're tokenizing or implementing some blockchain tech into their company, their stocks rise. Cryptocurrency snapshot, Kodak announcing a blockchain initiative and the creation of a cryptocurrency Kodak coin. Kodak stock nearly doubled following their crypto reveal. Traditional stock market is taking a page from the ICO scam playbook. Add blockchain to your name and you see the boost. In today's legal news bit in the cryptocurrency space, three class action lawsuits take aim at Riot Blockchain's Bitcoin pivot. Long Island Ice Tea is now a long blockchain company. They have literally shot up almost uh, over 250%, almost, I think almost 400% today, just because they put blockchain in their name. As we had pointed out, your company went public. Two days later, it bought, um, it bought Zidu.com, which says that it offers a blockchain solution. Your market cap skyrocketed. Were you simply taking advantage of the mania for blockchain. Let me explain you the blockchain. Price, we pegged it to Ethereum because I pegged it to Ethereum. Oh, it's so pegged to Ethereum. It How did you do that? No, it's a simple thing. If you have Ethereum price and I break, because I'm lending it's in not, Ethereum, why an not? An ERC-20 is not pegged to Ethereum. It's just so made what? on Ethereum. Sorry. We've got bad news. L-F-I-N, T-12, halt. What is going on with L-F-I-N? The stock was halted today, and how long is it going to be halted for? So why is that a factor? Well, uh, it's popular, blockchain tech is. It is the new cool, and it to, to those of us in the know, and because you're watching these videos, you are now in the know, blockchain technology is the future of IoT devices and companies, as well as just plain old currency. So why should Joe's Coffee Shop tokenize? There's a couple advantages. First off, you've got accepting money. So you go to a coffee shop and you pay with your debit card, you pay with cash. Uh, checks are pretty much dead nowadays, so you're not gonna write a check for a cup of coffee. So what are the ways are there to pay? Uh, you've got these new apps on smartphones where you can tap and pay, and it links up to a credit card, a debit card, or your bank account, things such as Samsung Pay or Apple Pay. There's also Google Wallet. So what advantages does accepting crypto have on top of that? Fiat is not a very volatile currency. It stays fairly stable, at least the first world country fiats are. So if you accept US dollars, for example, those dollars are gonna be worth roughly the same across a larger span of time. However, crypto is very volatile and the fiat value rises and drops with market sentiment. So it, it spikes and it dips a lot. Why would that be good for a company looking to accept crypto as payments? Well, the dipping obviously would not be too helpful, but this being the early days, think about, think about Joe's Coffee Shop accepting Bitcoin five years ago, right? Someone spends, say, half a Bitcoin or a few 10,000 uh, Satoshis for a cup of coffee. Then that coffee shop 
has that crypto in their wallet and as the price increases like it did exponentially over time the value of that asset that they now hold in their wallet joe's coffee shop is now worth substantially more it's almost like accepting an investment from your patrons why is that useful today well we're in a rough market right now right everyone will agree things are down but a lot of people agree that we've pretty much hit bottom right we're not going to sink too much lower looking forward in the future in the next few years bitcoin ethereum all your altcoins they're all going to be rising as adoption continues the more companies that tokenize the more tokens will be worth because the demand will increase supply will also increase but i predict that demand will increase faster than supply especially with these new regulations that i really hope do come out so joe's coffee shop they start accepting say they they accept ethereum and all ethereum based tokens you can go there you can scan their wallet address in a qr code and pay for your coffee lickety split and you can look back at all of your transactions without having to say keep receipts so you can track your spending and joe's coffee can track their income how much patronage they get in a, in a given day or week there, there's so much you can do with the blockchain with analytics and statistics the current tools these days are just scratching the surface of the kind of data gathering and processing you can do with the records kept on the blockchain ledger that's accepting crypto as currency as payments there's a bigger reason why your small companies and even your larger companies should tokenize and that's reward systems now there there are many other use cases but this is a very specific one that's thrown around a lot in, in at least my community that i'm involved with online and i got a request to to talk about this specifically so if someone asks you okay well this crypto phase it's a bubble it's just a phase it's going to end crypto's dead whatever uh here here's a good argument to give them maybe not an argument but an example an explanation of why tokens and crypto assets in general they're not going anywhere i like to talk about airlines so airlines they have airline miles the more you fly on these airlines or maybe you have an american airlines or delta air or whatnot one of their credit cards right so you use it for your groceries or for buying gas or whatever instead of points on your credit card you rack up airline miles and maybe you like to travel or go on vacation with your family so you use these free airline miles to pay for your flights right it's a great deal but those airline miles are only good for buying flights they don't have any intrinsic value outside of that airline imagine american airlines right they tokenize their reward system so for every mile you fly say you get a certain percentage of a token so you, you you gain these tokens you earn them and you can redeem them with the airline for flights but here's the the neat part of it those tokens have intrinsic value outside of the airline miles that they would be exchanged for those tokens have market value that could essentially be uh, cashed out for fiat depending on the token tech that they tokenize with you could potentially earn airline miles and turn it into cash and instead say maybe you've you've racked up a million airline miles that are actually tokens but you have to cancel your family trip because your great grandmother died heaven forbid or or your car breaks down or your pet needs a, some surgery or some life event happens where you can no longer take that vacation or you need you need some some money and you don't want to dip into your retirement or or your your life insurance so you could essentially cash out these airline miles these tokens for actual fiat so that you could take care of those things that you need to but you would be earning that through patronizing the the airline they should be okay with that wouldn't you think that if american airlines or any airline for that matter if any carrier tokenized their reward system would you want to fly with them rather than a non-tokenized airline maybe maybe not but if you understood what that meant the power of it i know i would be willing to fly 
an airline, one airline over another if I knew that one of them had a token-based reward system or airline mile system. So there, there are some other applications for tokenizing in logistics outside of reward systems or currency. That gets a little bit deeper into the blockchain technology and that's not necessarily where I want to go right now, but know that that's coming. Joe's Coffee Shop, right? They tokenize. You can now buy coffee with Joe tokens. But also, every week, if you say, if you buy one coffee every day during the week on your way to work, and you get free tokens based on that, there's no punch card to stamp. There's no card to swipe. It's not like another card that you have to carry in your wallet, in your physical wallet. It's an address, right? So you could have an app, a wallet app on your phone. And there's plenty of them out there that exist right now, like I am token, something I've used in the past. You just pull out your phone and you pull up the QR code on your screen and they scan it at the register and they say, oh, you've got 10,000 Joe tokens. You can exchange that for five free coffees maybe. So next week you drink your coffee for free. That sounds pretty good to me. There's a lot of tokens out there, a lot of coins out there, a lot of blockchain tech out there that will allow this. And of course by now you know that uh, OST is my, my pet token, right? I've been involved with it since the beginning of the ICO and I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna be talking about it a lot, but that's not the overriding topic for this series of videos. I will talk about very general blockchain and crypto topics, but I will highlight OST because I think it offers the most potential for anyone tokenizing. So what can you do with OST as a token, tokenizing your reward system that you can't do with just plain old Ethereum or any ERC20 token or any, any altcoin? The great thing about Simple Token or OST as it's called now, is that when you tokenize, when you mint a branded token, aside from it running off of Ethereum mainnet on a public side chain, all of the branded tokens or BTs as we call them, all those minted tokens that, that you've branded with your company's logo, they can operate across the entire network of branded tokens. There's the ecosystem of altcoins in general, and then you have each individual coins ecosystem. But one layer removed from that, OST allows you to have branded token ecosystems. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of Unsplash in the photography space. Um, what is that? Unsplash is the world's largest repository for um, royalty-free, license-free amateur photography. Really? And a lot of people, so they have over 300 million. So you can just buy it one time? No buying. You, you just use it for free right just now. Use it for, wow. Yeah. They have 300 million API costs per month. I mean, wow. this is, developers are building on Unsplash. Um, and so Unsplash will just do, and then those people just want to get a link back? So right now it's really, it's just, it's just, a, it's just, it's, it's just a good service is all it is. There's That's no it. monetization model. It's ripe for a token, right? For this sure. is, this is the kind of thing where, you know, on the business side, you could have the tokenization of the API calls. You could have the tracking of where the photo is actually appearing across the internet. Yeah. Um, you could have royalties, commissions, you could have bounty programs. You could say, you could run it through a CDN, you know, and yeah, just, exactly. you don't even have to, you s we'll serve it for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you were to give a bounty for, you know, I'm looking for photos of, of baseball parks hmm. and, you know, based from that photographers could submit and they could basically claim yeah, run contests, right? Exactly. You have the, the ecosystem of, of a given branded token and then all the branded tokens together. So you are in 10,000 Joe tokens, right? So imagine those were minted at a ratio of say one to 100, where every hundred Joe tokens equals one OST. Right? It's kind of like Satoshi's if you know what those are. Then American Airlines, their uh, AA tokens say, they are minted at a one to 1,000 rate. So every thousand airline tokens you, you earn equals one OST. So that's, they are different ratios, but you could take your Joe tokens, which have a higher OST value and exchange them for your airline tokens because they're both based on the same technology. They're both OST based. So you can convert one branded token into another. So you drink coffee every day on your way to work and you're spending money 
and you're earning you're earning rewards, you're earning these Joe tokens, right? And you have a bunch racked up at the end of the year. Keep in mind that they will never expire because they're yours and they can't be taken away from you because of the security of crypto assets, right? So you have these tokens, you've over the past year for your daily coffees, you've earned so many that you realize next summer you'll be able to take these Joe tokens and exchange them for airline tokens and fly to Maui for free. That sounds like a great deal. And I would totally go out of my way to patronize Joe's coffee simply to earn those tokens that I could use anywhere else that has tokenized. That's amazing. It's not just tokenizing is great for the economy and for, for the consumer, but in my opinion, tokenizing with OST leverages so much of the potential of, of crypto assets that it makes everyone's life better, right? And I kind of sound like I'm preaching right now, but once you get to know this project or blockchain in general, even if you, you want nothing to do with ERC20 tokens and all you care about is Bitcoin because it's what all your friends talk about, the ramifications of everyday businesses accepting crypto assets there's so many ways that helps everybody. Okay, one more thing. I should have put this into the first episode, but it wasn't forefront in my mind at the time. I wanna give you a PSA, okay? So we've been talking about wallets and addresses and, and blockchain and everything, but you might be asking, okay, well, what can I do to better protect my assets in a wallet? What is the best wallet to have? I recently got, this right here, this is a Ledger Nano S. This is a crypto hardware wallet, right? So my private keys are stored on this device and they're only retrievable with a password and plugged into my computer, hooked up to uh, a piece of software running in Chrome that is uh, also password protected. So the, the tons of security. If, if you aren't connecting that, that device to your computer, you can't access your funds, right? So it, it is an offline cold storage device. Now, I'm not necessarily trying to sell Ledger Nano S. Uh, there, there's a few other hardware wallets out there. I know of the, the Trezor, but if, if you can afford it right now, if you're investing in crypto assets, I, I urge you to invest in the protection of those assets by buying yourself a hardware wallet. It's only going to enhance the security of your investment. Think of it as more of an investment, right? Because you're protecting your money. Would you want to put your, your windfalls from, say, an inheritance or whatnot in an FDIC insured bank or under your mattress? Think about security. Also, a very important point with that, if you buy one of these hardware wallets, don't please don't buy it from eBay. Don't buy it from Amazon. I, nothing against these sites. Um, I buy stuff from them all the time. But only buy them from their website, from Ledger or Trezor, their websites. Because otherwise you don't know if a third party has gotten their hands on that device, hacked it, and repackaged it, and are then selling it on these third-party websites, knowing that when you plug it in and set it up, it will send your private key to them, right? So there's a lot of stories in the crypto news about people buying hardware wallets from eBay, and lo and behold, they come from China, and suddenly they've lost their life savings because they invested in crypto, but it was stolen from the hackers of, of the hardware wallet, so please, Go to one of these manufacturers' websites, buy it directly from them. If it takes six months for it to ship, because sometimes there's back orders, so be it. If it's a little expensive and it's a bit of a stretch, you're investing in your investment. It's worth it. You're not gonna spend, I believe, more than, uh, say, 150 US dollars total on these, depending on where you live and, and shipping costs and whatnot, but I absolutely recommend it. Short of that, get yourself an offline paper wallet you can go to my Ether Wallet, uh, I believe it's myetherwallet.com, and you can create your own Ether Wallet right there, and you can do it offline. So the hardware wallets I talked about, know that those accept 
all the major coins, tokens, and altcoins on the markets. Chances are, if you've invested in it, it can go on that hardware wallet. So that's all I want to talk about for tonight, and I'll, I'll talk to you later.